If you click this video, you probably think you suck at self-study. Hi, my name is Tina. I'm a ex-meta data scientist. Um, I'm a YouTuber and I also run a platform called Lonely Octopus, where people learn AI and data skills to work on real freelance projects. So I'm not going to go into much detail about this. You can check it out if you're interested in link in the description. But the reason that I'm telling you this is in addition to doing a lot of self-learning myself to transition from pharmacology to computer science to data science by seeing many students go through the Lonely Octopus program. TBH, within the first few days, we can generally predict who is going to be successful at self-studying and who's probably going to struggle. So the good news is that it's probably just a small tweak in your mindset or your methods that will completely transform you from sucking at self-studying to not sucking at self-studying and opening up lots of opportunities for yourself. You just don't know what your problem is yet. Let me introduce you to the magpie. Oh my god, AI is so cool. I have these books over here, but it's not enough. I need to, I need to buy, let's see, this course over here. Oh, this one looks good too. I mean, like Udemy courses are really cheap right now, so might as well buy like five of those on AI as well. And then I'll also just be doing the boot camp for the next eight weeks. I am so excited. I can totally put in 50 hours a week. You know, even though I have a full-time job, uh, I'm just gonna study really, really early and study until 5 a.m. every day. Excellent idea. Magpies are attracted to shiny new things. They want to take it and bring it back to their little nest and they're just obsessed. But within a few days, they end up losing interest really quickly and then moving on to the next shiny new thing. The first group of people that we just know is going to struggle in self-studying are the magpies. And how to identify the magpies? Well, there are people who are over enthusiastic. They get obsessed really quickly. Like they're just like, I want to learn AI. This is like the best thing ever. And then they buy like 10 different courses on it and actually start doing these courses. But like a magpie, they lose interest really quickly. And when things get hard, they are just done and they're off to the next shiny new thing. Especially with unrealistic study hours and expectations, that is what leads to burnout. So I just want to say that if you're a magpie, it's not necessarily a bad thing. You get excited about new things. You're passionate. You're willing to put yourself out there and try things out. And that's where all the opportunities come from. But to not fall into the trap of also losing interest really quickly and never really accomplishing anything, force yourself to think about why you actually want to learn this outside of just the hype that's surrounding it. How would it actually contribute towards your life goals or your career goals? And do not, I repeat, do not spend so much money buying so many different courses and resources and boot camps and things like that. Choose one and make it a low commitment and a cheap one. Pace yourself and if you actually like it and you think it's useful, then go buy some more resources and really dive deep into it. Self-learning is a game of consistency. Let me know in the comments if you're a magpie. TBH, I am personally a magpie naturally, so I've been working hard to slow myself down. By the way, as I go through this video and talk about the profiles of people who struggle with self-studying, I'll also link in the description a quick quiz to help you determine which type that you are and also give more detailed advice and feedback. Only if you want to, link in the description, it's free. All right, next up. I've never gotten a B before. The A plus student. This is Bobby. Bobby has always been great at school. He pays attention in class. He diligently takes notes and he studies things that are not based on his interests, but what is going to be on the exams. He essentially has hacked the school system. And because of this, he's always gotten A's. Yay, Bobby. But now that he's graduated and has a job now, he's finding it really hard to self-study or learn anything new. Without a grading rubric and a teacher telling him what it is that he should be learning, what's gonna be on the exam, he finds himself trying to learn everything. He also has a huge fear of failure. It never feels like he's ready to start working on any projects. He just feels stuck learning the same things over and over again. Okay, so without going on an entire rant about our current education system, we're trained to be cogs in the machine, hard workers that follows directions, but never goes rogue and God forbid creativity. So if you play this game well, you will do great at school. But after you graduate and you try to self-study, you'll find that it's really different. Self-studying is self-directed. There is no predetermined rubric or path. The solution to this, you gotta retrain yourself. Gotta be okay with uncertainty. Gotta be okay with experimenting and failing. Stop studying and start working on actual projects before you feel ready, because you're never going to feel ready. Much easier said than done. You're a wizard, Harry. 
In Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, the Chamber of Secrets is a series of dungeons built by Salazar Slytherin to purge the mudbloods and hide his huge ass snake. It got reopened in Harry's second year at Hogwarts when Voldemort manipulated Ginny, his best friend Ron's sister, to open it up and Voldemort intended for her skeleton to lie in the chamber forever. Harry couldn't just leave her to die, especially because he had a crush on her. So he had to answer this call to action and he went into the Chamber of Secrets to rescue her. But to reach her, he had to pass through seven different rooms, very murderous rooms. The first one contained a devil's snare, which is a plant that tries to ensnare you and kill you. As Harry goes through these rooms, he's scared, he's terrified, he's going through hell. He's also losing some of his friends along the way, knowing that even when he finally gets to the room, he's gonna have to battle Voldemort again. Now imagine maybe in room three or four, he goes like, oh no, this is too hard. I'm too stupid. I give up. I'm just gonna lie here and succumb to Voldemort. Who cares about Ginny? There's the concept called the dip from the book, also named the dip. In the book, he shows this graph. It has the x-axis of time where energy is spent and a y-axis of the amount of reward. Usually when you're learning something, you're excited and it's easy and you're able to see results really quickly. But inevitably, at some point, you're going to reach the dip. This is the point in which you put in a lot of time, a lot of effort, but you're not seeing as many results and rewards as you did earlier. Not realizing if they just push through a little harder, the reward is going to be massive. Kind of like this guy. Which one should I learn first? Is this the best resource or is this one the best resource? Do you need calculus for machine learning? Oh my god. A lonely octopus is someone that isolates themselves and treats learning as a solitary activity, but they feel like they're flailing alone by themselves, feeling lost and overwhelmed with their choices and just not making any progress. Of course, this may not be by choice because self-learning is in fact an isolating activity. Most people who come out of school, they don't actually learn that much anymore. So it's very possible that you just might not have other people to learn with. But even if that's the case, I cannot emphasize the importance of other people. Mentors can help you figure out what goes on your study plan and help you figure out what is important to learn, saving you a lot of time and a lot of wasted energy. People, your peers studying alongside you is also really important. A meta-analysis by Kirshner and all in 2021 analyzed a past decade of research on collaborative learning. They reached a the conclusion that collaborative learning is a powerful approach that significantly increases achievement. Of course, with that being said, there are caveats such as the integrity of the group has to be good, like good vibes, and the group composition does matter. If you're interested in a study, check it out, link it below. So if you can, try your best to reach out to other people, preferably learning the same things. P.S. If it's not obvious, the name Lonely Octopus was initially inspired by this archetype. You say you want to show the world you can be a splendid ninja, even if you don't have all the gifts that others are blessed with. The Rockly or rather the anti-Rock Lee. In the best anime ever, Naruto, most shinobi, or ninjas, can use three different jutsus. So I found this great analogy from Korra, so all cred goes to hell. Ninjutsu is like blowing a fireball at you and you feel the burning and it's real. Genjutsu will make you think that a fireball has hit you and it's burning you but it's not real. And taijutsu is like having a kick land on you and it feels like you're hit by a fireball. So both ninjutsu and genjutsu requires chakra or energy manipulation. And taijutsu is more like physical martial arts and doesn't require chakra manipulation directly. Usually shinobi can use all three and can master like two out of the three different jutsu types, but the top top shinobi can usually use all three and combine them together expertly. Now I want to introduce you to Rock Lee. I am so sorry, but I have to take my medicine at a certain time. Rock Lee is someone who cannot access his chakra directly, and so he can only use Taijutsu. Not only is it considered the least useful jutsu, without the combination of Genjutsu and Ninjutsu, it just doesn't have the impact. This of course puts him at a huge disadvantage. He was made fun of by his peers and his teachers and just told over and over again that there's no way he could ever become a shinobi. But his dream is to become a shinobi. He can't just give up on that. So he persevered and worked harder than anyone else to max out his affinity to taijutsu. Quote, if I cannot do a thousand push-ups, I shall do 3,000 sit-ups. And if I cannot do 3,000 sit-ups, I shall do 5,000 kicks. And that's how he became one of the strongest shinobi in the show. Rock Lee. The creator of Naruto, Masashi Kishimoto, made Rock Lee the character to represent human weakness, or rather the common man. It surprised him that Rock Lee became one of the most loved characters in Naruto. I think the implicit question that Rock Lee embodies is 
Just because he's not OP and the most talented person, should he just give up on his dreams? But he showcases the fact that you can't take advantage of the talent you do have. Work hard and ultimately find your own ninja way. That is in our boring normal world, a fulfilling life and career. So long story short, I'm not the most talented, I'm not smart enough, is not a good reason to give up when things are hard. That's like saying I'm not the most talented at math or programming, which I am not. So I should just give up and do nothing. Doesn't really make sense when you put it that way, huh? Stop comparing yourself to other people. You gotta find your own way to level up and to push your boundaries. And you might actually be quite surprised by what you are capable of. Sorry, not sorry, but can you guess what is the most common excuse I've heard from people about why it is that they have to continue studying and they're just not ready to take a leap? The most common excuse, I'm learning a lot. Yes, you are learning a lot and that is great, but there's also an infinite number of things that you could possibly learn. And you're probably just procrastinating on actually doing the thing you're supposed to be doing because it's harder. Sorry if you feel called out. Instead, you gotta invert your learning. Forget how it is that you learn stuff back in school. Like if you're learning to code, take like one programming class and then after that, start working on a project, a coding project. And that is where the learning really starts. All right, I hope this video is insightful for you. Just to mention again that there is a free quiz linked in the description where you can figure out which archetype or profile person that you fit under the most and more specific tips. Also, because throughout the years, my channel is now covering broader topics in career and self-studying in addition to the AI and technical stuff. I started a new completely free bi-weekly email list where I talk more about technical things like data, AI, uh, technical careers, programming, things like that. Also, if you sign up, you'll get notified for bi-weekly lunch and learns that we're going to start hosting on these topics. So all of this is completely free. So if you want to, you can sign up in the descriptions. All right, so that is the end of today's video. I hope this is helpful for you and you will become a master at self-studying. You won't think that you suck at self-studying anymore. I'll see you guys in the next video or live stream.